from the Fox 5 studios, this is the Red Zone Sports Show. <laughs> score each time inside the 20. Chance here to get six, and they do. Perfect strike from Brumfield, connects, and the touchdown is there. Steve Jenkins got it, and the Rebels have the lead. There's no moral victories. Uh, they know that. We're over that. I'm moving forward through that. I'm proud that they've got that mindset now. They see it. They feed it. Um, we want that win, and so we got to go away and find it. Disappointed. Uh, I love all my guys. You know, sad and we, we didn't get the outcome we wanted, but we did pretty well as an offense and executing and everything. And I just feel like, uh, you know, we got some big strides to take still as a team. And this team is still very young, so it's a lot, a lot of growth. And the redshirt freshman slings it to the outside, complete. And there's Collins in space, jetting down the He's field. Tyreek Collins gonna take it to the house, and he'll pose a little bit on the way in. 80 yards for the score, and the Rebels stunning the crowd here, and the Dogs to start half number two. No moral victories for the Rebels, but Coach Arroyo says his guys are headed in the right direction, and I think we saw that last night on Friday night in UNLV's Fallen game to the ranked Bulldogs. We got a lot of good to unpack with Coach Arroyo tonight. We'll be sitting down with Gio Fa'alu and learning more about his story and how his life has changed in his past six years at UNLV. And we are cranking out some of the best features I've worked on. We shadowed UNLV's sports dietitian Nicole Kylie this week and got to see all her hard work and how she fuels the Rebels. Very, very cool to see all the science and data that goes on with fueling the Rebels and them performing at their best. And I may have already taken out my cowboy boots for San Antonio next weekend. Just a little excited to be back in the Alamo Dome, and I'll tell you why coming up. But first, let's check out the highlights from Friday night's thriller in Fresno. After the Rebels defense forced the Bulldogs to punt on the opening drive, the sophomore quarterback Doug Brumfield burst out onto the scene. Brumfield finds Steve Jenkins in the end zone, and the Rebels are just warming up in their icy wipes. Later in the first, UNLV at the one yard line, Brumfield hands it off to the Chuck Wagon. Too easy. UNLV up 14 zip. Rebels defense swarming Jake Hayner early. Adam Plant Jr., his second sack of the season. The Rebels defense would hold the Bulldogs to kick a 25 yard field goal, and Fresno State trails 14 to 3. 32 seconds left in the first half, and the Bulldogs are barking back. Hayner to Eric Brooks, and Fresno State trails 14 to 9 at the half. Brumfield was a little shaken up in the second quarter, but he comes back out to open up the third with this. Quick pass to Tyleek Collins, and the senior is gone. 80 yards to the house. The Rebels take a 21 to 9 lead. But later in the third, Jake Hayner and Jalen Cropper start heating up the Jake and Jalen show. Bulldogs barking 21 to 16. 347 left to go in the third. Hayner to Cropper again. And the Bulldogs steal the lead 22 to 21. Hayner opens up the fourth again with a bomb to Cropper and the Bulldogs take a 29 to 21 lead. The Rebels are fighting back. The freshman quarterback Cam Friel would go in for Doug Brumfield, drops a 44 yard dime to Steve Jenkins. That would later set up this. Rebels at the six yard line, Friel fakes the handoff, tosses it to Courtney Reese who says, see ya. The Rebels are back in this. UNLV going for two, trying to tie it up, but no dice. UNLV trails 29 to 27. 956 left in the fourth. Hayner throws it deep. The ball intended for Eric Brooks, but he's picked off by Philip Hill. And we're seeing some deja vu from week one. Philip Hill's sideline pick against Eastern Washington. And yeah, you know we got that sideline, Sally, too. Gutierrez would later kick a 30-yard field goal to put UNLV ahead 30-29. to The anxiety, the emotions in this game, my goodness. 6.30 to go in the fourth, and Hayner would throw his fourth touchdown pass of the second half to, of course, his guy Cropper. Rebels trying to answer back, but Friel would be hit and the ball is loose. Fresno State's Kwame Jones recovers the fumble. The Bulldogs would later kick a field goal and finish on top 38-30 as UNLV falls to 0-4 this season. 
Here's more from the Rebels in Fresno. Uh, we did a good job of getting to the red zone and everything, but we got to execute and get more than uh, three points. We got to get seven because you think about it a couple times, we got to the red zone, it changes the game, got to execute, had some big plays, but I felt like I could have made those plays bigger. Um, but, you know, the offensive line did a great job tonight. Quarterbacks did a great job. And I want to shout out to the receivers, too. They stepped up big tonight. Uh, I love all my guys, you know. Sad that we didn't get the outcome we wanted, but we did pretty well as an offense and executing and everything. And I just feel like, uh, you know, we got some big strides to take still as a team. And this team is still very young, so it's a lot, a lot of growth. Hi, Coach. Welcome into the Rev Zone. So today's Sunday. If I say that you guys played last night, that's, that's my bad. That's my lack of sleep. You guys play on Friday. These Thursday-Friday games, they get into your head. I was looking for college game day on Friday morning. No joke. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's change days, certain things, you got to be ready for them. I don't know what day it is. Tomorrow's Monday, so at least we know that. Correct. I <laughs> um, want to start with the Chuck Wagon rolling, la rolling on Friday night in Fresno, um, but I more want to talk about the O-line and the improvement and growth you saw from the O-line on Friday. Yeah, they did a nice job. They had a good, good week uh, of prep going into it. We've obviously had some uh, really tough opponents we faced. So I think that there's, we talked about this early in the season, what, what can you get from playing uh, really good opponents and three top 25 teams? Well, you got to come together fast. You get to see some good opponents and you get to uh, find out exactly what you can get better at and be real critical of yourself against uh, quality opponents right away and, and, and go back to work each week. So we made some changes in the lineup a little bit uh, this week. Uh, we'll probably continue to do that. Um, to find out exactly where that gel can happen at. But I thought they did a nice job blocking the truck up front. We got to sure up some protection issues we've got. Um, and, that, and that, that's got to be, that's for sure, at the top of our list. But um, each week, you got a chance to get better it, with the guys in the trenches, especially when you're this young and, and, and experienced. When Chuck is rolling and he's bringing that juice and energy, what kind of effect does that have on your football team? Well, momentum is a huge piece of our game. And I think, you know, when we bring a physical component like we want to be in our, in our identity and you get the run game going. Uh, it can be demoralizing. It can be really, for the other team. It can be really uplifting for yours. When you got to, yeah, it's a physical sport, and I think that when the demands are met like that, it's exciting, man. So, um, again, that's what we want to be. Um, there's a lot of that it, it, within our offense collectively. I'll be play action or screens or run game where we want to be a physical physical piece uh, across the field. So it's good to see Chuck get rolling and, and get, kind of catch back up from uh, from where we, he's continued to show us in week one. All right, Coach, let's talk about your quarterbacks. Another strong performance from Doug. I know he's been a little banged up, but what maturity and what fight are you seeing from Doug four weeks into the season now? Well, both guys. I mean, I, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're, we're in infant stages at quarterback, and we've got a quarterback carousel going on right now that's um, a piece of why, you know, some of the chemistry and consistencies are happening. And uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. You know, we've got we're injured and banged up and tough and Doug and, Doug and Cam are both toughing it out um, in, in many regards. It was good to see that, but there comes a point too where you got to make sure that the uh, that you're not putting guys in jeopardy and you're not out there and, and can minimize what you need to get done effectively. So uh, that was a little bit last week too. So um, both those guys are, are tough and resilient, but we got we got to get some more consistency going on there, hopefully, and, the, and get that rolling. We saw that no flinch attitude from Cam when he went in for Doug. Uh, that calm demeanor you talk about. In your eyes, what's the biggest leap Cam made on Friday night? Uh, you know, I don't know if there's one huge thing that stands out. I think that what from from the week he started versus Iowa State to this week and just that maybe just he knew what to expect. Uh, it wasn't the first snap, and I think that's really big. It's just you finally get it out of your system and mm -hmm. realize football again, and then everything's bigger and stronger and faster, and, and as soon as that adjusts with you, um, you get to you go back to follow some of your, your normal fund, fundamentals and quarterbacking. And I think uh, we saw him get in the game and, and again, not flinch. Just want to highlight one guy on defense, Philip Hill, the junior safety has been balling out 22 tackles, one sack, two interceptions this season. How is he getting better each week with you guys? Well, I mean, his production is speaking for itself. I mean, he's going each day and, and, and coming in and, and preparing himself. Uh, physically and mentally and emotionally the right way, you can see that. And then he's been very tentful with that since he's been back with us. And uh, it's good to see because it's good for everyone else to see as well that uh, what he's putting in, he's getting out. And uh, 
he's another guy a little banged up. We're gonna hopefully have him, uh, hopefully have him cleared up this week. Hopefully for having for this week, but he's done. He's been he's been great for us. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to watch. Well, coming up next, we sit down with six-year senior tight end Gio Faalu, who says he's kind of a quiet guy on this team, but shows his leadership in his work ethic and how he plays. We'll hear from him next on why he's impressed with the freshmen and sophomores on the team. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Senior tight end Gio Faalu has been at UNLV for a minute, six years now. He's grown tremendously on and off the field, seeing not only this football program transform, but his life too. Gio tells us why he wanted to return to UNLV for his sixth season and why the future is bright for the Rebels under head coach Marcus Arroyo. I, I want to win. It's always been my number one goal. Part of the reason why I came back for six years because uh, me, Chuck, and Julio always told each other. When we first got here, he said, we got to put, we got to turn this thing around. So that's kind of what we want to do. We want to turn the thing around. You know, even our own thing. Hey, what's, what's wrong with going nine and three? We can still do it. Gio has seen the UNLV football program transform over the past six years. But his life has also changed too, becoming a father to his son Giovanni Jr. It actually changed me a lot. I had to, uh, you know, a lot of stuff I was doing, like, you know, being out with your friends all the time. And, you know, changes everything. You have to, before everything you do, you have to think, okay, well, what, what can my son get out from this? Or, you know, I can't just, oh, I, let me go get up, go get some to eat, because then I have to pack him up and bring him in with me. So, you know, it changes a lot, but that's actually been one of the best things that happened to me. But Gio isn't the only dad on the team. He says it's been fun to see his best friend, Charles Williams, also become a dad this year. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny. We're talking about, oh, yeah, we can set up play days. You know, I've been, me and Chuck have been knowing each other for six years. We were roommates as freshmen. And, you know, my son's about to be three, and he just had his baby, so there's stuff I can tell him, like, to prepare for and stuff like that, that he'll come and tell me, like, yeah, she's going through this. I'll be like, yeah, I remember when baby Gio was going through that, you know, just trying, give him tips, kind of, it's kind of funny. Gio tells me he's impressed with the maturity and resiliency he's seeing from the young guys on the team as they continue to build chemistry this season. I, I would say I'm proud of, especially because this is a young team, you know, guys are resilient to be that young. I know when I was a freshman and stuff like that, I wasn't always, you know, a hard worker and stuff like that. So seeing these younger guys get it going, you know, the pass off to the coaches that get them going like that, because I know when I was younger, I wasn't really, you know, the hardest worker or nothing like that. So, you know, I've seen a lot of good stuff out of these guys. And after six years at UNLV, Gio tells me he can see the change in culture and believes the team has a bright future under head coach Marcus Arroyo. Definitely. You know, it, the, the only way is up. When you, I mean, when you're on three, the only way is up. Can't really get any worse. But I would say, like, you know, when these, when these core guys he has now, when they get older and it's their time to lead, they'll be under him for four years and they'll see what how he wants to run things and how the program should be ran and those guys will know what it looks like and they'll be able to bleed it on to the younger guys like you know that we did that, that doesn't go here like you have to work hard and you know getting your playbook extra dark hours and stuff like that coach Gio says he's a quiet leader on this team but what were your conversations like with him when you guys were talking about him coming back for his sixth year well, I mean, quiet leading is fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, you can quiet leaders and, and introverts can lead just as well as anybody else. Uh, and so I think they, they all learned that when we first got together. I think me and Joe talked after the season. It was, you know, more or less what he wanted to do, what he felt like he wanted to do with his life. Did he feel like another year would be something he'd be would be beneficial to him as a as a man and as a as an athlete and with his guys. And we we met at the same point and, and said, hey man, we'd love to have. You. There's a ton left. I think some football left in you and some things I can we can help with, we can help each other with. And so uh, it was a good conversation. Yeah, I love all the maturity and leadership I'm seeing from all the dads on your team. Such great guys though, coach. Next, we come up with the best part of the show, I think, UNLV sports dietitian, Nicole Kylie, my girl, who is one hardworking lady. Respect for Nicole and her team as we got the chance to follow her along on this Fresno State road trip and see how she fuels the Rebels. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. It's 
really eye-opening to travel with the UNLV football team and see the army it takes to play on the road. This week, I got to shadow UNLV sport dietitian Nicole Kylie as we dive into the science and data of what the Rebels need to be eating and drinking to perform at their best. Right now, we've already done the prep work. They're strong, they're fast, they know how to play ball. It's bringing all those things together, making sure they don't get inju injured, making sure it's sustainable, making sure they're recovering well, and they stay bought in. So as performance staff, that's our role is like, keep them healthy, keep them strong, keep them confident, right? Nicole Kylie came to UNLV in August of 2017 with a work ethic unlike any other. I tried to shadow her this week, but she's just too fast, too talented at what she does. In fact, Nicole has been instrumental in the growth of sports nutrition at UNLV. It's grown tremendously. You know, in the beginning, it was a small, what we call fueling station in athletics, a little grab and go fridge, really to just kind of increase access. And as you can see now, it's transformed into student athlete only dining halls, fueling stations, expanded team members, right? So we have more personnel and we're just able to have a much more customized approach and the athletes feel it. It's built into their services. So we've greatly enhanced student athlete wellness, student athlete holistic services, and that I'm proud of. I love enhancing the student athlete experience. So what did the Rebels eat on this Fresno State road trip? So the goal of our night before game day meal, which we call Friday night meal, is a very yummy meal. Large buffet, high in protein, carbohydrate, fat, lots of antioxidants. We let the guys kind of go to town and self-regulate in that way. As we get closer to game time, we prioritize the nutrients. We don't really want high fat, high fried foods as we get close to game time, that slows digestion. And our priority nutrients are carbohydrate and, a, and some protein, we wanna protect muscle tissue. So our pregame meal um, is a little bit more simple. You're gonna use the pasta with marinara sauce in lieu of the Alfredo, right? You're gonna use the, the simple rice. You're gonna use baked potatoes instead of a, a rich mashed potato. So similar items, but differently prepared in order to speed digestion, make sure that they're comfortable, make sure that they feel, feel locked and loaded. And when it comes to hydrating the team when playing in hot conditions, Nicole says the secret is in the special juice. We've customized each guy. They know how much they need. They know the sweet spot. And so we're really targeting from a hydration standpoint that each of those guys are staying on pace during the game. So you'll see me today really targeting specific people. I have this little concoction that they know the bottle I'm holding is the special juice. You know, it's the special juice. And they look at me like, oh God, her again. But they know, they know. And they know when they're feeling tight, they reach for it. And so we have a few different beverages and flavors depending on what they like, but um, there's a science behind it and we, we implement that. It's clear UNLV football has enhanced their sports nutrition as the Rebels look bigger, faster, and stronger this year. Nicole says that's thanks to Coach Arroyo. He said, I don't wanna just say that we feed the guys and we have a great nutrition program. I wanna actually do it. Just, just throwing money around and, and giving food and stocking feeling stations ain't it. Right? We want detail, we want customization. We wanna be thinking three steps ahead, right? And so when we recruit someone on, we're thinking about what they're gonna look like in three years, right? We're developing plans and we're making, being intentional in our approach. Um, he's very detail oriented. He, he notices everything and I appreciate that. I don't know if you know this, but he graduated with an exercise science degree. Um, so it's a personal passion, I think, as well as something he values professionally. And so that helps me. I feel that helps me because he cares. Um, and so when I say, hey coach, we need to do that, we need this, he gets it. The Rebels are preparing for an undefeated UTSA team that rallied back from a 21 point deficit, beating Memphis on the road this weekend. The Rebels will be looking for their first win of the season at the Alamo Dome, and I will be looking for my cowboy boots. We'll be right back. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5.
All right, y'all, we are packing up for Texas. Coach, don't be surprised if I show up in San Antonio with a hat and boots on. That's right, the Rebels are getting ready to face an undefeated UTSA team in San Antonio on Saturday for a 3 p.m. kickoff. The Roadrunners just beat Memphis on the road yesterday, completing their largest comeback in school history. UTSA would rally back from a 21-point deficit to tie up the game at 28 with the help from their junior running back, Sincere McCormick. They iced the game with a field goal to take a 30, a, excuse me, a 31 to 28 dub over Memphis. And they'll be riding that undefeated energy this week, getting ready for UNLV at the Alamo Dome on Saturday. Coach, the last time I was in the Alamo Dome, TCU was down 31 to zero at halftime, and then we beat them in triple overtime. So I'm undefeated in the Alamo Dome. Me too. <laughs> Are you excited for this week, Coach, coming off that Fresno State performance? Um, yeah, I am. I'm excited just for another week of work with our guys. Man, they've, they've, they've started to turn this thing in the right direction in regards to mindset, culture, and preparation. Each week, we've really been strict with it, and I'm excited to get back out there tomorrow with you guys. What improvements do you want to see from your guys this week? What leaps do you want to see this week? I want to keep building off what we've done that was good. I, mean, I want to keep building off stuff fast and, and communication and running the football and stopping the run and more explosive plays last week and uh, improve our protection. Special teams come along, they keep coming along. Uh, I'll slow down the pass game. Uh, I want I want to do it all, man. I, I do. That's not that wish list isn't something that's uh, too big to handle for us. They're all pieces that that lend themselves to the small pieces that make up the, the difference in a in a loss and win and loss. So. Uh, they all matter. These guys know that. Excited to get back in here. They had a good run today as a team and uh, good mindset. So I'm excited to see them here when we get back rolling. All right, Coach. I'm wearing my cowboy boots. You'll see me on the plane with my <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> with know my I got mine. Yeah. I'm like, are you going to wear your cowboy boots? <laughs> I wore them last week. You saw them. <laughs> so funny. All right, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow, which is Monday. Don't let me forget. <laughs> Sounds good. See you good night. Take care. Thanks for watching Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.